and welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for the 22nd day of September, which is Thursday. And according to all the calendars I can find, this is the day of the autumnal equinox in the Northern Hemisphere. Sometime around 7.30 tonight, the sun will cross that latitude. And from here on out, the days get shorter until the, tw until the uh, sorry, until the solstice, the winter solstice on the 21st. So we're at the turn of the season. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia, which is pretty far north compared to a lot of you who might be listening to this, although I pray that there are some folks north of me that hear my voice. And before I get into this, I would simply ask you if you would, if you find these devotionals helpful, if you find them encouraging, please like this post and subscribe to the post, making it easier for you to uh, receive the post, and set the, um, the announcement, the, uh, the notification bell, so that you know that the new ones have come out. I do post them as close as I can every single day, so that they're there for you to help you in your walk with Christ. As this is Thursday, we have a new psalm, we get a new psalm out of the lectionary every Monday and every Thursday of the week. And so today the psalm changes and we'll continue with our semi-continuous readings in the Old Testament and of course readings in the New Testament as well. And as always, from a reading from My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. So let us begin as I will read Psalm 91 verses 1 to 6 and verses 14 to 16. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. From our semi-continuous reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 9 to 22. Concerning the prophets, my heart is broken within me. All my bones shake. I'm like a drunken man, a man, like a man overcome with wine because of the Lord and because of his holy words. For the land is full of adulterers. Because of the curse of the because of the curse, the land mourns, and the pastures of the wilderness are dried up. Their course is evil, and their might is not right. Both prophet and priest are ungodly. Even in my house I have found their evil, declares the Lord. Therefore their way shall be to them like slippery paths in the darkness, into which they shall be driven and fall. For I will bring disaster upon them in the year of their punishment, declares the Lord. In the prophets of Samaria, I saw an unsavory thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. But in the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns from his evil. All of them have become like Sodom to me, and its inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with bitter food. 
and give them poisoned water to drink. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has gone out into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, It shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, No disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord, wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people. And they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. And now from the New Testament, the second letter to the Corinthians from the Apostle Paul, we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 8 to 15. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And in this matter I give my judgment. This benefits you, who a year ago started not only to do this work, but also to desire to do it. So now, Finish doing it well, so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that, as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had gathered nothing left, o- had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. This is, according to your very scripture, Lord, your eternal word and may you be praised eternally for the good gracious generous provision of your word written to us grant us through the power of your holy spirit the ability to not merely hear your words lord but to understand them to have your holy spirit guide them into our minds and into our hearts into our very souls wherein they may work what is good and pleasing to your will This is our prayer to your glory in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And now, Oswald Chambers writes for September 22nd in his book, My Utmost for His Highest, a writing entitled, The Missionary's Master. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. The words of Jesus, as recorded in the Gospel according to John, chapter 13, verse 13. To have a master and to be mastered is not the same thing. To have a master means that there is one who knows better than I know myself, knows me better than I know myself, one who is closer than a friend, one who fathoms the remotest abyss of my heart and satisfies it. One who has brought me into the secure sense that he has met and solved every perplexity and problem of my mind. 
to have a master is this and nothing less. One is your master, even Christ. Our Lord never enforces obedience. He does not take means to make me do what he wants. At certain times, I wish God would master me and make me do the thing, but he will not. In other moods, I wish he would leave me alone, but he does not. You call me master and Lord, but is he? Master and Lord have little place in our vocabulary. We prefer the words savior, sanctifier, healer. The only word to describe mastership in experience is love, and we know very little about love as God reveals it. This is proved by the way we use the word obey. In the Bible, obedience is based on the relationship of equals, that of a son with a father. Our Lord was not God's servant, he was his son. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience. If our idea is that we are being mastered, it is a proof that we have no master. If that it is our attitude to Jesus, if that is our attitude to Jesus, we are far away from the relationship he wants. He wants us in the relationship in which he is easily master without our conscious knowledge of it. All we know is that we are his to obey. Oh, Father, that we would know the sweetness of simply being yours, of simply being with you, of simply being called by your graciousness and love to obey. Grant us that wonderful knowledge. Grant us the, that wonderful perspective. Grant us the freedom of knowing what it is to be your obedient disciples and the freedom that that brings for us to live our lives to the full in you. Grant us the understanding of this deep and beautiful mystery, we pray, so that we can give true worship and glory and praise unto your Father, Jesus Christ. We pray this in your name. Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, friends, for uh, spending time again today, listening to Scripture being read and taking the time to stick with me until the end. I pray that all goes well with you, and until we are able to be together again to do more of the same, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.